Hello, friends. Today is April 22nd. This is called Leave the Future to Me. Do not worry about tomorrow. So this is a command that I want you to obey. It's a loving one straight from my heart. You see, I understand you and your weaknesses. I know that you're human and you make mistakes. My command not to worry isn't meant to make you feel guilty. It's meant to set you free from feeling stressed about things of this world. Just before I gave this command to my followers, I told them how to enjoy the freedom of not worrying. And I tell you the same thing. Your heavenly father always knows what you need as you try to do what God wants because that's important your way of looking at life will change. The stuff of this world becomes less important than the eternal things like adding more people to God's kingdom, God's family. So put more of your time and energy into growing your relationship with me. Look for my presence, but also look for my will, what I want you to do. Be ready to follow me. I will guide you on great adventures that fill your life with meaning. a nice little story. Put God first and he will lead you in the right direction. All right, I want to thank everyone for having their moms or dads send me a couple pictures of their work um, yesterday. Let's look at our math for today. So this is the problem solving lesson and I've cut it down to make it not so long for you. Let's read the example at the top. So this is lesson 10, five. Caesar buys three boxes of markers. Each box has five markers in it. So we have Caesar on the, the left side. Isaac buys four boxes of markers. Each box has four markers in it. Who buys more markers? So this is telling us that you can draw a picture. Oh, I'm sorry, Isaac is on the right side. This is telling us that we can draw a picture to show the total number of markers that each boy buys. That way um, we get a visual picture and we can see which one has more. Although for this one, it's very close. So you would maybe even need to count. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's look at the rest of it. The number of rows shows the number of boxes. The number of columns shows the number of markers in each box. Okay, so let's talk about that. So Caesar has three boxes of five. So remember, this is the row, this is the boxes, one group, one. This is one box and in that box is five. One, two, three, four, five. This is another box and then there's five in that box and then the last box and there's five in that box. So five plus five, plus five, Caesar buys 15 markers. Isaac has four boxes. So this is one box, two boxes, three boxes, four boxes. And in each box is four markers. So that is like doing four plus four plus four plus four, which is 16. So Isaac buys 16. Isaac buys more than Caesar. So when that asks us, um, Uh, oh, I was thinking it said, oh, total of, total number of markers each boy buys and who buys more. Okay, so Isaac buys more markers. All right, so that's just our example. Now, I don't want that yet. Oh, where did it go? Very weird. Okay, so there's our example. 
on the back there are three problems. So this is this is good for you to draw out um, rows and how many would go in each row. Maybe you even know a step further what the multiplication problem would look like if you were doing that, um, which is good. But probably drawing a picture will be the best way to help you. So let me do number one with you. So there's three on this page. The next page is gonna be an example. And then there's two more problems. So today there'll be a total of just five problems. Um, and we're also going to be skipping a page. So uh, I don't want it to be too much for you. Number one, Mr. Hill plants two rows of five tulips. Two rows of five tulips. I think I'm gonna use a stamp. Two rows of five tulips. He also plants three rows of three daisies. Does Mr. Hill plant more tulips or daisies? Draw a picture and solve. So I'm going to use my stamp. I'll use the heart for tulip. Two rows of five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's one row. One, two, three, four, five. Here's my second row. Now I think I'll pick a star for um, the daisies. So I have two rows of five. Five and five is 10, right? And now I'll do three rows of three daisies. So there's one row of three daisies, two rows of three daisies, and three rows of three daisies. So Mr. Hill plants more of which flower? Tulips, those are my red hearts. Or daisies, those are my yellow stars. Did you say tulips? All right, I would write tulips. I'm trying my best. All right, tulips like this or tulips, those are flowers. <laughs> All right, so um, number two is the same kind of thing. Draw a picture to help you. Number three is asking you to explain how you got your answer to number two. Let me clear that and then let's look at the next page. All right, at the top, it's showing us Caesar, the Caesar and Isaac example again. You're going to do number one. So it's the same thing. Draw a picture so that you can figure out how many are in each, um, how many rows and how many are in each row. When you go on the back, it's not going to let me click. Okay, fine. Be that way. Sassy paper. Where is my other side? Oh, that's why. Poof, there it is. I really don't know magic. I was just trying to time that. Okay, look, I crossed out three and four. Why did I cross out three and four? Um, the author of this book threw in two different kind of problems and they're not really what we're doing, working on rows and how many in each row. So I don't want to confuse you by throwing in something completely different. So I would like for you to skip three and four and just do number two on this page. And that'll be the same thing as all of the other problems. Now there's a whole nother page. The front and back of that is homework. We're not doing that. That's way too much. This will be plenty of problems for you to get practice. Um, so I will make sure that I put that on the Edlio what ones to do. That way, um, if you forget after watching this video, it'll be there for you to just go back and look at. Religion, where are you, religion? All right, we're gonna go to a new chapter today in our religion book. This is chapter 11. We act on God's word. So 
But this first page is looking at imagining yourself in each picture and what would you do if you were in that situation? What action would you take? The next page, How Christians Act. This is a short story about Jesus judging all of the people in the world. And then there's a little bit at the top here. And then there's a short activity. What are ways we can treat others with love? Write about or draw one thing you can do. And then let's look at cursive. And I'm going to pull up. Today we're going to practice days of the week. And on my Adlio, I put a example for you. I'll make it a little bit bigger. It's kind of blurry when you enlarge it. Um, and there's also the cursive alphabet on there to help you. But you can use this, pull this up. Um, you're gonna practice Sunday. And I notice on Sunday, the capital S is not connected to the lowercase letters. Monday, the M is connected, the uppercase M. We have Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you do not need to write there are seven days in a week. You're more than welcome to. This was just an example paper I found online as I wanted you to see the days of the week. So I would like for you to practice those today. Um, and that's all for cursive, and hopefully you have paper that you can do that on. And that's going to be all the work I want you to do for today. I think that's plenty. So, uh, there's something else I was going to tell you. I don't remember. Anyways, I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.